thank you, everyone. I uh, appreciate you all making time uh, to come to this event today. Uh, as all of you know, and the people in our community know, we suffered a, a terrible tragedy last week. And on behalf of the people of the city of Syracuse, uh, I want to add my voices uh, to the rest that we have seen, uh, giving our most profound condolences to the Anderton family uh, and the extended members of the Anderton family. They have suffered a tragedy that is unspeakable uh, and one that has touched the heart and soul of their neighbors, uh, this city, this community, our fire department and our police department. And so uh, as it is my profound uh, honor as mayor of the city, um, but on a, to give our condolences on a real tragedy that we have had. Um, and so we come here today to talk about what the causes of the fire were and I would just ask that the media be very respectful of the fact that there is real loss and real pain uh, on both uh, the people of the fire department and the police department and, of course, the Anderton family and the people of Martin Street and the people of the city of Syracuse, that this is something that nobody ever wants to be a part of, experience, or uh, live through, and yet that's what we have seen this community do in the last week and really rise to acknowledge the memories of that family, the sacrifices that were happened, and the reason that we are uh, so truly fortunate to live in the community that we do, that we recognize this as a profound loss for the family and for our entire city. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Chief Lenertz, who will talk about some of what has been found. Again, I would caution you all that while we live in a world where we want instantaneous answers to questions, uh, that's not the way that these things work all the time. So there are still lots of unanswered questions, still things that need to be resolved, um, and so we will not be speculating uh, on anything because that would be inappropriate. And also, uh, if we don't have the facts to your questions, uh, we will say that freely. So thank you. Chief Leonard. Thank you, Mayor Miner. Good afternoon. The fire department would like to thank the following agencies for their assistance in the investigation of, the, of this tragic fire. First, the Syracuse Police Department, the Onondaga County Medical Examiner's Office, and the Onondaga County 911 Center all offered a tremendous amount of help as we investigated this tragedy. There was an accidental fire that started on the enclosed porch in the front of this house. The cause of the fire is smoking materials igniting a combustible. Calls to the 911 center and reports on the scene reported an explosion. Our investigation has determined that what was perceived as an explosion was actually the failing of the windows on the front porch due to the superheated gases inside the enclosed porch. Those windows failed, introduced oxygen, and there was an immediate reaction. The fire um, accelerated. During the extinguishment process, a 20-pound propane cylinder was removed from the living room. The owner reports, the homeowner reports to us that that propane cylinder was empty. Our examination of the cylinder reveals that the safety relief valve operated and opened, but the propane cylinder was not involved in the cause of this fire. Unfortunately, there were no working smoke detectors in the house. The medical examiner's office has verified the identities of all the fire victims. The only correction to be made to the information we've previously released is the family has asked that their daughter's name be spelled correctly, and it's Cassandra, C-A-S-S-O-N-D-R-A. The first arriving companies encountered heavy fire conditions. The evidence indicates that the volume of fire was attributable to the delay in the reporting of the fire to the 911 center. And finally, I'd like to recognize the men and women of the Syracuse Fire Department who responded to this alarm. 
These men and women put themselves in very dangerous situations in an attempt to rescue the occupants of this house. Their superhuman efforts, unfortunately, um, weren't successful this time. I'd also like to thank all the members of the Fire Investigation Unit. They put in over 40 hours of uh, investigation, investigative hours to determine the cause and the origin of this fire. They did a great job. Thank you. We'd be happy to take any questions that anyone has now. Um, Chief, I don't know if this goes um, to you, but can you be a little bit more specific when you say um, smoking materials ignited a combustible? We cannot be more specific. By smoking, do you mean like cigarette smoking? Or? We can't be any more specific than smoking materials. At, at this time or at any point? We will probably never know the answer to that question. Chief, could you maybe explain a little more? So the fire started in the enclosed porch. Could you explain a little how the fire started there, but you're saying the explosion may have been the windows. Maybe just what that process, you know, what you know of how that would have taken place? Specifically how it took place here, I can't tell you. My experience is that as the temperature in a room heats, the glass essentially fails and drops out of the windows. It, it cracks first and then it drops out. The reason we feel there's no explosion is there was no propulsion of the glass. It simply falls to the ground in proximity to where you'd expect when you broke a window it dropped. Would you be able to have any guess as to how long, how much of a head start the fire had? So the heavy fire was due to a delay in reporting to 911. So would you have any guess as to like, when that started to when that call roughly? Joe, do you have any? In the, the evidence that we have so far, we're looking anywhere between one and possibly six minutes, which would contribute to the spread of the fire. Joe, your name is? Joe Galloway, G-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y. Um, before this ends, the family asked, uh, when I spoke with them this afternoon, uh, asked me to clarify something. They're getting reports that there, uh, is there some confusion about the calling hours. They want everybody to know that the calling hours are public. Um, there was some confusion that they weren't. They want everybody to know they are public. The funeral services will be private, and they asked for that time. With the one to six minutes you just mentioned there, we heard a lot of people say on the scene that there was very quick response time. Do you feel that this was unpreventable, that there was nothing crews could do? Our response time was three minutes and 56 seconds. The alarm came into the 911 center at 03.51.15, 15 seconds. The 911 center dispatched that alarm at 03.51.39. So they got the phone call, they turned it around to us remarkably quickly, and traveling from Station 2 to the, one of the most northern parts of our district, they got there in under four minutes. Uh, there was just a tremendous volume of fire there when they pulled up. that fire doubles every is it every is minute it every minute I mean but with that volume of, of fire was there anything else that may have contributed other than just the, the natural physics of it doubling every minute or was there something else there that would make it burn so intensely and so hot I think that our evidence and the information that we've been able to gather uh, indicates that there was no accelerant, there was no additional anything that other than the contents of the house that caused that. Uh, the propane cylinder was reported to be empty. Well, our experience is no cylinder is ever truly empty. So when that relief valve released, it may have released a small amount of propane, but I don't think that it was significant in uh, the contribution to the size of the fire. How frustrating is it, and this goes to any one of you, that we go through another fire that's happened year after year after year where people just don't have smoke detectors. And it's a simple process that they can do, and you know, you guys obviously got there as quickly as you could, but it's, it's just, you got to feel like you're, you're banging your head against the wall trying to get people to understand that this actually saves lives. 
my recollection of the last fatal fire we were involved with when I spoke with the Fire Prevention Bureau, I think in the last 10 years the Syracuse Fire Department has installed 28,000 smoke detectors in the city of Syracuse. I think we're doing a great job of getting them out to people. Unfortunately, the older style, the batteries fail or the batteries are removed. And there's nothing we can do about that, but it is indeed frustrating that a smoke detector may have made a difference Friday night, but we're not sure. You know, Tom, let me just say, and, and I, I would add to that, or you burn food and you take the smoke detector out or you, you do all that. Um, if everyone who is who has thought about the Anderton family, if everybody who is going to go to the wake, if everybody who is listening to this right now, if they all stop and take a moment and make sure that they have a smoke detector, that their loved ones have a smoke detector, that they think about what would we do as a family if this were to happen to us, then that will be uh, one way to make sure that, that these tragic deaths are not in vain. And so while we have all had, uh, been heartbroken about this tragedy, uh, one of the things that I think everybody can do to make sure that this is not in vain is to, is to say, I'm going to, in the memory of these children, in the memory of this family, make sure that my home has a working smoke detector, make sure that, that my neighbors have a working smoke detector, and the people that are in my life, that I ask them that question. Um, and that will go a long way towards preventing this kind of unspeakable incident from happening again in our city. To, to both Chiefs, both Chief Leonard and Chief Bauer, can you give us any kind of insight as to how your men and women are doing? I know it's to some degree part of the job, but this one goes above and beyond, I think, anything that any of your folks have to deal with. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, we, we realize the line of business that we're in. And, and, and as a leader, when, when you take that into consideration, uh, you don't wait for something to happen to put something in play. You, you, put it in, you put it in place in advance of incidents like this. So, so for the Syracuse Police Department, uh, we have a peer support group that their, their goal is to monitor their peers. And they've been specially trained not just to know what to look for, but to, to, to to direct them toward resources. Uh, we have some great chaplains within the Syracuse Police Department that we use in the same capacity to, to help our personnel. And, and in times like this, we don't take for granted that our personnel is gonna step up and say, hey, I'm struggling a little bit here. We make sure that we put something in place so that everyone that's involved uh, has to participate in it. And then afterwards, we monitor and we make sure that, that they know where to come to for help. We, we have the same support system. Um, we've talked to every one of our firefighters uh, once or twice already since, since, incident, since this incident. And as a matter of fact, our mental health professional, one of our mental health professionals is here with us today, coincidentally, to talk about this with uh, our people that help our firefighters in our support group. So was it just a, was it just a thoroughness or was there anything that um, gave you guys any kind of trouble um, in investigating this or was it just a thoroughness to make sure you, you covered every single part of this? It's, it's a good question because we get um, asked by all of you guys over and over again, why does it take so long? It's it's a long process, whether it's this fire we're talking about or a minor fire in a living room somewhere. If we don't follow the systematic approach and do our due diligence and we say something wrong, we, we can't get that back. Um, so we do that whether it's a, a fatal fire like this or any other fire to get the answers. We are sworn to um, get the truth, get the answers not only for all of you, but for that family. And that's what they've been waiting for. When you, when you say uh, smoking materials igniting a combustible, could that be like any object sort of in the room? Like sure, a chair, a trash can, excuse me, um, anything like that. The woman who escaped the home, how is she recovering? 
I know that she's been released from the hospital, but I have uh, I have no update on her condition or the status. Do you have any more information about how it was she? Um, she was uh, awoken uh, by somebody else in the house. Uh, she made a attempt to uh, alert the remaining occupants in the house. Um, and when that was happening, she, when she believed she was had that accomplished, she had it outside. Does, did the person who alerted her, did they remain, is that someone who died in the fire? trying to let other people in the house know? That's correct. Is there anybody else? All right, thank you all very much.